Mm. Oh, that's good. I just, I keep having this nagging feeling that I've forgotten something. Hey, if you forgot it, it probably wasn't all that important. Yeah, I guess. With Surfshark VPN, you can change your computer's location to view hidden content like Shout Factory's Tokushoutsu that will help you to catch up to Hurricane Jer. And you can even watch every single Ultra show from Ultra Q to Ultraman Rube. You also can use Surfshark VPN on many other streaming services like Netflix. Like King Golger, Surfshark VPN has multiple important components. It encrypts your internet activities so no one can track or steal your data because you don't want some alien crime boss to steal your data and then sell it to some suit named John Toy or something. You also can change your IP address to hide your location and avoid tracking, protecting your data and privacy while using public Wi-Fi or networks that you don't trust. Keep your digital freedom while traveling to internet-restricted countries. You can also set up one Surfshark VPN account and use it on an unlimited number of devices. And for $2.30 a month, not including tax, for the two-year plan, which comes with an 82% discount that also grants you two additional months for free. You can also get Surfshark's amazing bundle that contains not only the award-winning VPN, but also the great antivirus, search and alert. And for $41.88, not including tax, by using the link down below that not only helps you to stay protected while surfing the web but also help this channel out so i want to thank surfshark for sponsoring today's video and now to your regular scheduled programming before i talk about the big thing that happened in this episode let's talk about the stuff that happened around it the show did remind me that Neon has a mom. Neon came to her old house to check on her mom after seeing that Kosei is in custody. And her mom goes back to her toxic behavior, wanting Neon to stay with her. But she does tell Neon that all of the times that they had together was genuine and she genuinely loved her and she was actually really apologetic for what Kosei kind of did to her but Neon refuses and leaves it was a fine scene again Neon's stories with her parents is the most interesting thing about her and when you remove them from her story it kind of gets boring and the way that the show kind of at least leads us to believe is last episode was the final time we saw Kosei and this episode would be the last time we saw Neon's mom and I don't know what they're going to do with Neon and I am kind of scared if what I at least see or at least what I translate from what the show tells me or at least what the show shows me is correct because I don't know what they can do with Neon now. While the new DGP producer Samas, I finally learned her name and the new game master Jito are trying to understand how to forge Tsurumi as the second goddess of desire. They meet Kekera and Beroba and give them the new premium Bandai black cards. Oh, sorry, it's just the premium black cards. But it is very much going to be premium Bandai web exclusive, you know that. That would help them distract Ace and the gang from the DGP getting Tsurumi back. After that, they get an encounter with Win, where we see that Jito is combat proficient. And Jito tells Win that if he wants to protect Tsurumi, he can go right ahead. Which makes Jito slightly more interesting, because he probably understands or even wants to fight to actually get Tsurumi which is the almost the complete opposite of every other game master and Samas is just there. Well, the show proved me wrong with Daichi. I thought he's just going to be an Archimedel 2.0, but the way that he looks at the Jamato is completely different now in comparison of how Archimedel looked at them. With Archimedel, he was very nurturing them, 
seeing them as being that deserve better, while Daichi see them as something to be poked and experimented. Archimedel cared for them, while Daichi straight up eats a baby Jamato, which I don't believe Archimedel ever did that. And it was very interesting to see Beroba and Kekera's faces. Beroba was very disgusted, while Kekera was weird. It's like he doesn't know if to be disgusted or just laugh his ass off. Kekera being a weirdo in this episode is semi of an interesting factor. Sera is once again important to the story, with her wanting to help Keiwa after he decided to join Ace with fighting the Jamato, so she looks for a side gig pretty much. On the job interview, the Jamato attack, she tries to fight them, but Daiji comes to save her. And you know what happened after that. Right. He does explain to her that there is actual stages to the Parasite game or the Parasite Jamato. Stage 1 is one Jamato enters the body of a human and takes over it until the Jamato gets defeated and the Jamato itself is forcefully leaves the body, leaving it to be open to be destroyed. Then there is stage 2, multiple Jamato enters the human body that turns into a cocoon, fully transforming the human into a Jamato. When you destroy the Jamato, the human dies too. Again, do I really need to tell you what happened after that? The only thing I didn't really like about the entire thing is Sarah just accepting Daichi is here to help her? She needed to know there is something slightly off about him, not to the degree of knowing that he is the new Archimedale, but like, he wasn't really a good guy before, he was very much a piece of shit to her and everyone else. It's like, he genuinely messed with her, he actually tried to get her killed in like the last arc. So having her actually like, oh my god, I believe you, is weird. A worried Keiwa gets a text from Sarah that tells him that Daiji knows something about the Jamato. He takes the text to Ace and the gang, where he gets really angry, and Ace calms him down and they go look for Daiji. Where they find him, they get him into an alleyway where he sleeps and comments about the Jamato being parasites. After that, the free fight with Daiji's new Jamato form. It looks really cool, I like the color combination, and it being way more kind of bug slash parasite themed, really cool. In the middle of the fight, K1 understand what Daiji is doing, and he runs off. While Ace continue to find him for a bit, until he gets the upper hand and disappears. I really like what they're doing with Keiwa, getting him more and more out of the character that he was in the beginning, which I can say the same thing for Azuma. Azuma finds a cocoon, specifically where Sarah was, and a Jamato burst out of it. They start fighting, and in the middle of the fight, Beroba just comes in to taunt Azuma again. Azuma does tell her that she and the Jamato are his only targets. And he defeats the Jamato. And this is where he and Keiwa discovers that Sera was the Jamato. Sera's final words were, I wanna fight like you. Damn, like that hurts. That genuinely hurts. Keiwa launches at Azuma after admitting that he killed her, while Beroba and Kekera are cackling like a bunch of hyenas, and Tsurumi is watching in disgust. Everyone leaves the area, in exception to Keiwa, Tsurumi prays for him. And this is how he gets his final form, being Shogun getting the full explanation that the goddess of desire's powers can be triggered if they resonate strongly with someone else's desire. How much I truly, how much I truly believe that Sarah should have died in the Desire Royale arc, this was pretty good. 
again, should have been in the Desire Roy arc where she's fighting and scratching and crying and just being kind of the head in the fridge. But it was fine. Everybody acted so well in this scene. From KY being sad and angry towards Azuma, and you can actually see his grief in his eyes. And even in the end of the episode where he's just, his head is down and he's just sad and depressed, you can actually, you can actually see and feel what KY is feeling. And you can clearly see the regret on Azuma's face, specifically where he actually get the reveal of Sarah being the Jamato. And you hear it in his voice of like, man, I killed her. Like, I am very sorry, but he can't really say that because he's responsible. But how much he didn't really know. And just seeing Kekera and Beroba just watching and laughing proves that Kekera's actor was born to be a villain. And I love the way of his twisted ideals of what's it like to be a real common writer. And it's kind of interesting to see that Beroba kind of connects the despair that she's looking for to the same despair that Azuma is feeling. Again, this is actually really interesting to see. And from what it looks like, it's going to be like Azuma and Keiwa fighting for a bit until they turn around and they would fight Kekera and Beroba because they, they did get the new black cards. So maybe they would get like actual suits that both Keiwa and Azuma can physically fight. Well, we did get a new form in the debut, kind of, of Tycoon Shogun. Well, I am I don't know really what to think about it. It's really cool looking, but also it's a complete kit bash of a lot of the upper armor of Twin Command and the head of Twin Command Tycoon. I think the shoulder pads and like the arms themselves are ninja and the entire legs are also ninja. So it's a complete kit bash, but do you know what? It looks kind of cool. Again, the, the color scheme works. The black and green fits really well, and I don't really hate it. And it's kind of interesting to compare how Gitz's final form debuted next to how Tycoon's final forms debut. Gitz is like in the sun, and like the sky is blue, and it's like warm weather while Shogun was debuted at night with rain. Shogun is very much based on hatred and loss, while Gitz 9 is way more based on love. And it's so interesting to see like the almost like pure rider the Tycoon was in the beginning gets a all black form while Git that was manipulative and lying to Kewa a lot get like an all-white almost godly form again it's really interesting to see kind of the subcontext of those two forms not only by their look but also in the way that they debut Gitz 9 is some sort of a blessing while Tycoon Shogun is despair and it feels like Kewa lost something to get his final form where Ace actually gained something from getting his final four. While Ace got to see his mother, Keiwa lost everybody that he loves. And that's like truly depressing. And I'm very interested about what's going to happen next with Keiwa. So yeah, what you thought about this week's Comrade the Gits? Comment below, let me know. Thanks Surfshark for supporting my channel. Subscribe to my channel if you didn't and have a great rest of your day.